Hello and welcome to Ask a Dyer, a segment on my YouTube channel where I talk about all of your hand dyeing questions. And this video is brought to you by my patrons over on Patreon who have also provided the first round of questions. So first things first, this is a new segment where I'm going to be answering all of your questions about hand dyeing yarn. When I was a new dyer in 2016, over five years ago, I had so many questions and there weren't a ton of resources out there to answer them. So I learned a lot by trial and error and I probably do a lot of things incorrectly, but it works for me. So I want to say this up front, I am not an expert by any stretch of the imagination and there are also a lot of different ways to dye yarn. So um, my answer is not the absolute be all end all correct answer. It is just how I do things. So I want to keep that in mind. And also I'm going to be looking over here with my questions. Um, any links will be below in the description box and I'm really excited and I hope you love the segment as much as I do. So first question. Um, oh, also my name is Stacy. I'm the dyer behind Stress and It's Yarns. Um, I live in Detroit, Michigan with my husband, Doug, our daughter, Eliza, and our pug, Esther, who is snoring in the corner. I have my pumpkin cold brew. It's just a venti cold brew with two pumps of pumpkin spice and the silicone straw because I bite them. <laughs> so um, let's get into the questions I have for today. So first question. I have thought about trying my hand at dyeing for maybe a sweater or project just for fun. Where do you get the bare yarn you use or how do you know where to look, find it, and what do you think and look for when interviewing a new base of yarn? So that is a big question. And if you are a dyer yourself, you have probably gotten this question at nausea. And um, I, I get it. It's hard to start from zero. It's hard to not know where to look. And that is where I would like to introduce you to my best friend, Google. Um, you can Google where to find yarn. I'm going to give you some answers, don't worry. But um, my answers might not work for everybody based on where you live and your budget level. So, um, there, so if you're just trying for fun, I would recommend Knit Picks. Now I know Knit Picks isn't, I don't think they ship worldwide. Um, not sure about that. So if you don't have knit picks, I don't know. Um, any kind of discount yarn where you can get wool and um, basically anything other than acrylic. Um, and that's just because dyeing acrylic is a different process that I know nothing about. Um, so that's why I would recommend going for a an animal fiber like wool, mohair, alpaca, or if you are interested in um, plant-based yarns, there are other um, resources out there for that. I am not a resource for that because I've never dyed plant-based yarn, so I don't know how much I can speak on that. I can't speak anything on it. I've never done it. So, um, so I'm just going to talk strictly about animal fibers and animal fiber blends. So I would look for probably 100% probably merino to start off with or whatever you like um, and maybe with some nylon content in there I think is a really good place to start. Now Knit Picks offers bare yarn by the skein and you can also buy mini skeins on Knit Picks and I'm looking at it right now I'm like a bare woodland tweed mini. All their minis are $1.50. $1.50 for a bare mini. That's amazing. So that is a really good place to look. Um, I think they also offer wholesale discounts if you have a wholesale account. Um, but if you're just dying for fun, if you are starting out, I really recommend Knit Picks and breaking those large skeins down to mini skeins or buying the mini skeins because you're not going to be good at it right away. You're going to add too much or too little. It's going to not be what you're looking for. So I just, I really recommend buying cheaper trial yarn to start off with to even see if you like the process before you get into the bags of yarn that an indie dyer would buy. 
And so um, getting into that, I buy my yarn at wool to dye four, two, four numbers. <laughs> um, wool to dye four. Um, it is a wholesale mill and that's where I get my yarn. It is not the only place to buy undyed yarn. Again, Google will be your best friend and just Google wholesale bear yarn and you will find the other places because I think there's like two main places that dyers buy from in the United States. And so um, for me, I use what I use and I know other people use other places and other dyers work with their own mills or work with a mill that can do a special line for them. I'm not there yet. <laughs> I don't make that much yarn. Um, but those are your options, but there are some catches. So when people hear wholesale, they get really excited because they know it's going to be cheaper. But first off, you have to have a wholesale account, which means you have to have a tax ID number. Now, once you have all of that figured out and you've like registered your business and all that and you get your tax ID number, then you can apply for a wholesale account. And then when you have your wholesale account, there is a minimum purchase required in order to get the wholesale discount. So for a long time, even though I had a tax ID, even though I could have gotten a wholesale account, I didn't have one because I could not financially make the minimum wholesale purchase. It was too much for my budget. And I didn't start using my wholesale account until maybe two years ago. Like to put that into perspective, like I was buying at cost for a long time and that ate into my profits as a business. So keep that in mind because um, I think for wool to die for it's like 12 kilograms, kilos, something in there. And that equals like, depending on what yarn you're buying, you're looking at like 600 plus dollars of bare yarn at once. And that was just not something that I could afford at the beginning or even when I was like three, four years into this. So that's also something to keep in mind um, because when you have to buy at cost, your profit margin is very small and it's hard to get out of that. <laughs> um, it took me a long time. So uh, keep that in mind, but that's where I get yarn. As for what do I look for when I am interviewing a new base of yarn, um, I look for what I like to knit with. So I know that I really enjoy merino wool. I enjoy Coriadale. I enjoy an 80-20 high twist for socks. I enjoy Surrey alpaca more than mohair. I, I don't know. I, I do love non-superwash yarn, but it's um, not my favorite thing to dye. I'm working on it. So um, it's just something that you kind of trial and error. Um, but I usually don't, like if I see something with a silk content, I won't touch it because I don't like silk. I don't like knitting with silk, so I'm not going to put it in my line. Now I love cashmere and I love knitting with cashmere. I love wearing cashmere, but um, I, um, sorry, it was my daycare emailing me. Um, I, uh, so I love cashmere, but it doesn't sell great in my shop, so I don't buy it. And so, like, that's also part of it, too, is that I know, for me, like, tweed, I love tweed yarn. Tweed yarn doesn't sell in my shop. Um, I occasionally love a Stellina yarn. Doesn't sell super well. I love a single. Doesn't sell super well. So, instead, I look at the bases that I really, really enjoy and that's my 80-20 high twist fingering weight, which is my favorite base. That's why it's called that, because it's my favorite. And um, that's my best seller. And that's what I dye the most of, because that's what sells. It's what I love the most. And it's just, it's the best. So um, it's different for everyone, because, I mean, think about um, Magpie Fibers. They do a silk base and it's one of their 
most beloved yarns. Um, Birch Hollow, who I love, but her main yarn is a 7525 and I don't really love knitting with it. And, but sometimes I buy it anyway because her yarn is so beautiful. So, I mean, and for me, 7525 didn't sell as well as 8020, which is good because I prefer an 8020. So it's, it's really um, unique to each dyer. It just, it really depends. So I think you should dye what you like. And then from the pool of what you like, the yarn that you like, listen to your customers. And then, you know, if you want the cashmere sweater and nobody's buying your cashmere yarn, just buy a bag for yourself your next order dye your own. <laughs> like that's, that's kind of the beauty of being a yarn dyer. So, um, that's that question. That's a long winded question, but it's a big one. Uh, question two, how do you test a new color? Try it on a mini, dip it in white paper towel, something totally different. I do a combination of both and, um, something different. <laughs> so it really depends on what I'm working with. Usually when I'm doing my, 24 skeins for my advent calendar, I tend to buy one or two extra bags of minis to test out colorways before I dye the thousands of mini skeins that I'm dying for advents. Because if you get in and you have like 30 mini skeins going and you look and you're like, oh, I actually don't like this, it sucks. And I've been there. So I would rather waste one mini skein and usually I will use those for heels, toes, and cuffs, a contrast stripe in my crochet blanket, or I will bundle them as mystery minis for the shop. So there's a whole different thing. If you hear pug snores, it's my pug Esther. She's sleeping in the corner. Um, yeah, so I will dip a mini when the stakes are pretty high because I want to get a better understanding of what I'm working with. Um, coffee break. Um, when I'm working on a tonal, I usually dip it in a white paper towel to see if I like the tonality of it, if I like the value. Um, and then if I'm doing like a variegated colorway like this one right here, which is my Squad Gourds colorway new for fall 2021, if you're curious, um, I will make the dye stocks and I will dip a paintbrush into the dye stocks and blot it onto a paper towel to see how they work together, how they work when they mix, um, to make sure the colorway is going to come out the way that I want it to. And also sometimes I'm just like super brazen and uh, just go for it. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't, but that's, that's how I do it. <laughs> Uh, question number three, love your new, more saturated and more bold colors. Thank you. They really stressed me out. Uh, will you continue to dye more of these? Yes, of course I will. I love dark saturated colors. One of my favorite colors to wear is black. I'm working on a black. It's a very hard color way to dye. Um, but, oh, I have one of them here. Um, so like one of my most beloved Dark Colors is Mountain Mama, which is like this olive foresty green color. Um, and I'm not gonna lie to you, they're pain in the butt to dye with the way that I dye. And it's not always my favorite to dye, but I love the result. I love my dark saturated colors. And I only have a few of them. So I have, let's see, Mountain Mama, Sunflower, which is a like golden brownie yellow. I have Brick, which is a tonal brownish red. I have Cold Brew, which is a brown. <laughs> um, I have, mm, what else is there? Rust Belt, which is a rusty orange. I think that might be like all of my super dark colors, but um, they are harder for me to dye. So it's, and it's harder for me to get the result that I'm looking for with the dark colors. Um, so yes, I will be dying more, but when, I don't know. <laughs> so then 
the question that kind of piggybacked off of that is, I love your softer tones and always wondered how you got them. When I was dying, I did it in hotel pans and my colors always came out so bold, probably because I wasn't using much water. It's always fun to see how other dyers do it. It is super fun because dyeing is so, there's so many variables within dyeing that everyone does it just a little bit differently. So yes, I do use more water when I'm doing my pastel colors. Um, I also use less dye and I tend to have the policy of less is more with dye because sometimes you think you're using a little bit and then it's way brighter than you wanted it to be and it's a little disappointing. Um, and I really love the softer, more muted tones. It's really what I'm drawn to. Um, I also kind of think what I'm known for as a dyer. Um, so yes, I use more water and I also start off with like, especially when you're thinking about colorways like palm lines, which is a barely there pink or pillow mint, um, which is a barely there like bluish mint color. Um, I, don't, I didn't bring any props over <laughs> next time. Um, I start off with the smallest amount that I can just to kind of tint the water and I dip my yarn in and I usually have to add just a little bit more at a time and dip and turn my skeins um, to make sure it's as even as possible. Um, but yes, the trick is water kind of works as your white in painting. So when you mix white with a color and it kind of tones it down and it brings a lighter and more pastel value to your paint, water works the same way with dye. Water is your neutral. If you want a very saturated dye, you use less water. And if you want a more, um, muted light color, you use more water. I think I said that correctly. So more water equals a lighter color, less water equals a darker color. Okay. And then the last question is, I just started dyeing for a small house line in our shop. And so I've definitely paid more attention to how dyers process. I was at first worried I'd end up copying, but then realized quickly there are so many variables and so many ways to get to an end result. You, um, you, an end result you like, that it's good to play around with lots of methods until you land on something that feels right. What part of the dye process do you enjoy the most and the least? So yes, it is correct. There is um, a ton of variables from the dye method you're using to the dyes you're using, um, what acid you're using to acidify your water, what, um, <laughs> what uh, pan size, um, and something that I think is a, the biggest variable of all is the water you use. So like I'm using city water. I live in Detroit, I'm using city water. Now, somebody who lives somewhere where they use well water, I feel like it's going to be very different than city water because of the hardness and softness of water. So I think that's also a huge factor of how your dye turns out. Um, luckily, when I moved, um, we got Detroit water in the suburb I lived in. And so now that I live in the city, I get the same water. It's from a different uh, treatment plant, but it's the same water. Um, I think it's from a different plant. I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, it is, it's crazy how many, like how all of those different things, everyone, like every dyer could use the exact same dyes and do it in their own method and you would get something similar, but never <laughs> the exact same. And even like dying on a humid day versus dying in the dead of winter, it's different. <laughs> it's different. Colorways come out different, um, differently. Uh, so that's, that's interesting. So, um, what part of my process do I enjoy the least and the most? So I'm going to go with the negative first. So the least, I hate prepping yarn. I hate it. I hate getting it out of its bag. I hate um, tying it up. I like that's just, it's 
a tedious process because you have to do it correctly so you don't get a tangled mess of spaghetti in your dye pot. Um, so that is the one thing that's like, ugh, like I'm kind of putting off doing that right now. Like that's what I have to do in order to dye yarn tonight and I'm putting it off by making this video. I don't like it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to turn on a podcast and I'm just going to go to town. Um, it's my least favorite process. My favorite part of the dye process, I have two, well, three. I really love dyeing yarn. Um, I really love creating colorways and especially when you dye that first skein of a new colorway and it's exactly what you wanted. Um, there's nothing more, well, there are more things. There are things more rewarding, but as far as the dye process goes, it is the best feeling in the entire world to have something in your brain and then translate it on yarn and it come out exactly like you wanted to, which is what happened with this color. Um, and then I also really love um, twisting all of the yarn, which I think might be a little weird. Um, not labeling, but I actually like um, cutting all the ties off and twisting it on my twister and um, just see like because sometimes I'll do different colors at the same time and seeing how stuff plays together and it's a really fun process for me and then I also love seeing other people knit with my yarn I think it's so cool that people like what I do and to see what they make with it and how they interpret the color I think it's really cool so that is it for this episode of Ask a Dyer. If you have any questions about the yarn dyeing process or just yarn dyeing in general, please leave them below this video and I will try to answer them in the next one. I'm only going to do a few questions per episode because I can get a little long-winded. So I hope you enjoyed this and I cannot wait to see you next time. Bye!